Hey y'all, how's it going? <sighs> I had a very quick weekend trip to Florida. It was quite lovely. I have never seen magnolia trees in full bloom. I'll leave a photo over here. Also, don't be alarmed, this is my gardening knife. Um, but I think I need a magnolia tree in my future. Not here, but like, I really need a magnolia tree. So that was a really great weekend. Um, also, I got to walk through a citrus orchard, which like, bomb for my soul. Um, but I came back yesterday and today we had rain all day, which is great. The garden is very happy. But the other thing that I found today, which I brought my knife out for, ah, our squash vine borer eggs. So this is the yearly chat about squash vine borer eggs, which are right down there. They're those little brown things. Oh, I did find a squash vine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set you up while I talk. All right, y'all, let's hope that the rain is done so my camera doesn't get wet because uh, I think uh, I think mama would be getting a new camera at that point. But squash vine borers are little moths that lay their eggs on squash plants. And the eggs take about 10 days to hatch. So you do have a window of time in between finding said eggs and getting them off your plants. However, sometimes it's a little bit hard to find them. So I actually had a subscriber reach out saying that she has put together like a very comprehensive list of information on squash vine borer borers in general. So if I get her permission to share that with you, I will because these little effers are quite a problem for me. It is pretty impossible to get to all of them, but you can get to most of them if you really pick up your plant. These things, man. I actually found a squash vine borer pupa uh, in my dirt and it killed it. I'm not gonna lie, it felt pretty good. But one of the problem is they can be really hard to find because they're just these tiny little eggs. So from what I understand, your squash vine borers are attracted to a couple of things. They are attracted to the color of the squash blossom, which is very yellow. And they're also attracted to the smell of the squash blossom so that was exciting thing number one or not it that was that was tragic thing number one now on to more exciting updates in the garden now i know i just showed you guys the garden tour like last week but these cucumbers and gourds are like exploding all of a sudden and i put up my net so these runners, which I could not for the life of me freaking remember what they were called, those runners are gonna grab onto this net and they're going to climb. I'm so excited. So I may have to put like a, a bamboo post or something for them to work with. But things are happening. So one crappy thing, which was the squash vine bore eggs um, and a couple of good things. So one of the good things were my cucumbers growing like crazy. Here's the other good thing. You guys know what those are. Those, my friends, are gonna be the first ripe tomatoes of the year. These are sun golds. And we not only have a couple on this plant, but we also have a couple on this plant. So, that that is extremely exciting. They're still, they need to just ripen on the counter just a tiny bit more. That's very, that's a very beautiful thing. Very exciting. I also have a peach melba nasturtium that has bloomed. So the garden is, it, it's, it's happening. Things are really happening. I have yet to go to the community plot because it was raining all day and I was working. Um, so we'll have to go there later this week. So it's gonna be a little bit of a vlog ski. I think it's gonna be a very rainy week, which is honestly very welcome because I need a break from watering the garden. <laughs> okay, y'all, I'm at the community plot and I was not ready for the amount of growth that's happening right now. 
Let me show you. Look at that onion. Oh my God, I think I'm gonna go ahead and harvest one. Maybe not that one because I it's a big daddy, but I'm gonna try and harvest another one. And then my green beans are huge. Everything is just so green. Oh my gosh, and these tomatoes need so much support. But these determinants, look at that. Look at that big honking chunk of tomatoes. Oh my God, I'm so excited. And look at those romas. Oh, I'm so pleased. So I'm harvesting some herbs because this is like prime herb season, especially for sage. So I'm harvesting sage. There is also a couple of other things I want to show you, namely a really funny volunteer. Um, but I'm going to get as much of this sage as I can. The sage seems to not love our like super hot weather. So I get as much as I can and I dry it so that I can have plenty of sage. Guys, 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 guys. <gasps> Look at my onion. Oh my God, this is so exciting. Oh, uh, it smells so good. I cannot wait. And I'm actually gonna save the green tops as well. So. The deal with onions is you can harvest them early. Once they start bulbing, you can really harvest them whenever and it's fine. Um, but generally, you wanna wait until the the stems get, get squishy and they flop over. But, oh my God, I'm so fucking excited. Uh, probably gonna bleep that out. But here's the other thing I wanted to show you. Remember, like these last few weeks, I've been trying to talk about how I'm gonna be super tolerant of volunteers and I'm just gonna like let the garden be what it is. So. Amongst this beautiful sea of, of papas. Oh, a cardinal. Hi, buddy. Wow, pretty bird. Among this beautiful sea of card er, cardinals, it's not a sea of cardinals, it's a sea of taters, is this massive freaking sunflower. And I think based on the color of the stems, a couple of years ago, I planted firecracker sunflowers right here. I think that might be what it is. So. I'm just gonna let it live there because these potatoes are probably gonna be harvested in like another month. And so we're just gonna let it ride. But I cannot believe my marigolds are getting huge. My freaking zinnias are starting to get massive and some are even starting to get blooms. I cannot freaking wait. Oh my God. So what this means is I have got to find the time this weekend to figure out how to contain these jungle tomatoes. Um, oh my god. Oh, I feel very abundant. This is awesome. Okay guys, I got excited. Lana's yelling at me. I got excited about my onion and I already cut it up. Like here's the tops. And what I'm gonna do with the tops is I'm actually gonna dice these and freeze them um, because they work really good for like fruit, uh, green onions for stir fries. And then I also got a bunch of fresh herbs from the garden. So what I'm about to make right now is some risotto. Risotto is one of my favorite things to make and I happen to have all the ingredients to make it. And so we are starting with our onion and some uh, bacon grease from this morning because I believe in fat. It's also 7.45 and this is not gonna be done for probably 30 minutes and I'm having a very late dinner. But it's worth it. Big news, big news. I finally figured out how to do cooking content that isn't terrible. And uh, it's going to be coming out next week, actually. So I'm excited for you guys to see it. Um, I hope it goes as well as I think it's going to. <laughs> if not, we'll just keep working on it like we have for this whole channel. Um, but I have a bunch of fresh herbs that I'm going to put in this risotto. Oh, I can taste summer. Okay guys, the lighting is absolute trash because it's now dark. It's 8.30, that took me an hour. <gasps> but I think it was worth it. So we have risotto with our onion and mushrooms um, and with a uh, garlic stock, a roasted garlic stock. Um, and in there is some sage and oregano out of the garden. I topped it with some fresh basil. You don't usually want to cook with basil because it gets brown. And then on top, this is just a chicken apple sausage. So the chicken apple sausage with the sage should go really well together. Um, I'm really excited. The risotto has Parmesan cheese in it. 
I am the happiest little camper in this moment right now. Mm hmm Yeah, that'll be just fine. That'll be just fine, thank you. Okay, y'all, I'm not gonna subject you to any more eating. We'll see you later this week. All right, y'all. We're gonna show you one last thing for the week before we close this out. Oh, it's bright out. Very bright. I had a work in my sweats day. I don't do that very often, but I didn't have to talk to anyone today, so that helped. So, you guys have seen this. This is gonna be the cucumber loofah wall. And my net was not quite <laughs> short enough uh, to for these runners to grab onto. So what I did was I just tied some hemp twine that I have so that the leaves would have something to grab onto. So we've got one of them here. And then this one is, uh, this one's resisting, but sometimes with these runners, you can kind of help them a little bit and get them to grab on by kind of guiding them like that. Um, and that's pretty easy to do, but man, some of these are looking real nice. And then looks like we got one over here. That's great. Yeah, definitely, you know, got to get a little creative sometimes. Okay, y'all, that was a very random vlog full of a lot of things, but I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got some garden inspiration. I'm filming some really cool content this weekend. I'm really, really excited for you to see it. I hope you like it. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening. See you next time.